just looking a little bit deeper at the pulse width modulation, uh, you see here that we're trying to create a an idealized voltage signal that looks like a sine wave, right? And to do that, we have very short pulses where we near, where, where we want something near zero voltage, and then we want wide pulses where we want our maximum voltage, and then it declines and then it goes up again. Uh, one thing to keep in mind here, if you're thinking about the spectral properties of this, this is a switching, something called a switching frequency. That's how often we send a pulse out. And let's say our, our switching frequency is something like 10 kilohertz. Normally, it is, these switching frequencies are very fast. Notice as we go through the cycle here that some of, some of the gaps here are getting wide, some of the gaps are getting very small. So it's not a, so if you were to think of this spectrally, you would think of this as maybe having a, a center frequency that would be the switching frequency and then having sidebands, uh, one that would be lower in frequency and one that would be higher in frequency. And how the spacing of those sidebands would depend on uh, um, the voltage signal that we were trying to, uh, to produce at any one time. So let me say that again. The pulse width modulated will have will have one frequency spectral line that will be associated with our switching frequency. And then it'll have other spectral lines that are associated with the fact that we're varying our duty cycles. And some of them will be lower, lower frequency and some of them will be higher frequencies than our switching frequency. <laughs>